passion, the clean flesh that marched and fought and suffered, again quoting Heist, and is now buried in them. I will make three points. First, America's overseas military cemeteries present the soldier Christ analogy in a particularly intense way, a way made possible and perhaps necessary by the over-thereness of the dead. In so doing, these cemeteries attempt to answer questions about the morality of American warfare and the eternal fate of the American soldier before those questions can be asked. Second, in spite of the overwhelming presence of Christian imagery and nationalist orthodoxy, these sites provide opportunities to contest the very myths in which they trade. Finally, attention to the many intersections between historically Christian models of righteous living and American understandings of the ideal soldier offers a potentially fruitful pathway to a re-examination and a fuller accounting of what I am calling, with some hesitation, American civil religion. This terminology comes to us from Rousseau via Robert Bella, whose 1968 essay, American Civil Religion, stands as a controversial classic of sociology and US religious history. I use it here to describe a multifaceted religious tradition that looks and acts like a hybrid of American nationalism and Christianity. The material I am presenting comes mostly from a recent research trip in France, funded by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation through the University of Illinois Office for International Programs. And I owe them a debt of gratitude for their support. The cemeteries I visited there were designed and constructed and are maintained under the direction of the American Battle Monuments Commission, or ABMC, established in 1923 and answerable directly to the president. There are 23 ABMC cemeteries worldwide. Eight of them, located in France, Belgium, and England, hold the remains of 31,921 Americans who died in the Great War. 15 cemeteries in France, England, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Italy, Tunisia, and the Philippines hold 93,242 American dead from the Good War. No two ABMC cemeteries are identical but all are variations on a single aesthetic, theological, civic theme, at the center of which is the fallen soldier as an incarnation of the ideal America. At the most practical of levels, America's overseas military cemeteries were built as answers to the question of what to do with the more than 80,000 dead American bodies spread across France and Belgium after the Great War and the 410,000 spread across the globe following World War II. But from the very beginning and from the ground up, there were also ideological and theological spaces. An early advisor stated that American cemeteries in France had to be in quotes, little Arlingtons in order to be compelling memorials. After all, far more French, English, and German blood had been spilled in the conflict. The concepts of Arlington certainly informed cemetery planners. One body per grave, ample personal space around each grave site, but designers also departed from the model in significant ways. First, because membership in the cemeteries was closed, as it were, designers could be far more intentional, even artistic, in the placement and arrangement of bodies. This first picture comes from Ain Marne Cemetery around uh, the famous Bellow Wood. You can see that the crosses there have been arranged in a kind of semi-circle surrounding um, the, contested, uh, the contested wood. Second, in response to calls from Great War veterans and General John Pershing, who served as the ABMC chairman for over 25 years, individual graves were marked with white marble crosses or stars of David instead of the rounded headstones that populate Arlington and uh, dominate the veterans cemetery system here in the United States. As an aside, there was quite a debate over how to mark these graves, and one comp a compelling case was made that they should echo the aesthetic of Arlington National Cemetery. Someone who was advocating for the use of the marble cross retorted to this argument uh, with a variation of a famous World War I poem. That variation went like this. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow, between the squat little headstones, row on row, 
pointing out that with English and French cemeteries decorated with crosses, it would seem rather strange that the Americans were using these, as he put it, squat little headstones. That argument and the voices of American veterans and, and General Pershing carried the day. The aesthetic effect of the white Latin crosses is to reinforce principles of symmetry and order and to provide a contrast with, as you can see, the verdant lawns. The theological effect is to assert at the ground level the sacrality of the space and the uniformity, even the Christ-likeness, of those buried beneath the crosses. The ABMC also erected chapels at each of its cemeteries in Europe. The sanctifying effect of these is unambiguous. The chapels vary in design from neoclassical to Romanesque to neo-Gothic, but the exterior and interior employ strongly Christian imagery to portray the dead and the cause for which they fought as holy the highest expression of American patriotism and Christian living. The civil religious effect of each cemetery as a whole is to sanctify quintessentially American ideals through the dead bodies of soldiers. The dead are arranged without regard to class, race, creed, or national origin, presenting to the pilgrim a vision of American society not realized in the lifetimes of the soldiers and arguably elusive to this day. ABMC cemeteries also employ an inversion, classic in both Christian and American memorial practice, by which the dead, not the living, are truly empowered, truly alive. Their deaths, described at almost every turn as sacrifices, are meant to place a claim on the living, to require those who walk among the crosses and the stars of David to pursue the ideals for which these men and women are said to have died. ABMC cemeteries gather together what Drew Gilpin Faust has named the constituency of the slain to inspire or to convict the pilgrim. Nowhere are these dynamics more clearly evident than at Seren American Cemetery located just west of Paris where roughly 1,500 great war dead and two dozen good war dead are buried. Seren was established as a hospital burial ground during the Great War and was dedicated by President Wilson on Memorial Day 1919. American Ambassador to France William Bullitt rededicated the site in 1937 after nearly two decades of construction and landscaping turned the once rough, muddy, crowded burial ground into a pristine, grassy cemetery with its own neoclassical chapel. Inside the chapel, an altar bears a gold cross and Jesus' words from the Gospel of John, I give unto them a 